Good morning, church. In the book of Acts, we read about the development and the formation of the first and early church. But could you imagine what it was like doing that and living through that time? I mean, for generations, they had the, the, what they had known about of gathering God's covenant people was the temple. Now, in the early parts of Acts, we see that they still continued to meet in the temple, but soon after, the, the religious leaders kicked the Christians out of the temple. And then, not too long after that, we see in AD 70 that the temple fell. So what do you do when that happens? What hap what, what did they, how did they form their structure? How did they become to what they, what they came to know to be uh, as the church? How did you do that? That must have been difficult. That must have been hard. But thankfully, uh, because, of, because of God's faithfulness, He gives us His Holy Spirit and He gives us His guidance. And he led the church to be able to form a structure that we seek to try to model today. Hear this from Acts chapter 2 as the church begins to form. It says, They, the Christians, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So we see the Holy Spirit guiding them, helping them to better define structure. They met in the temple soon after they started meeting in homes, and they were led by the apostles. They're led by teachers. But later that the, the home church structure started to develop and they started creating different positions, different offices of leadership known as elders and deacons. Growing up, I did not know what it meant to be Presbyterian. I grew up as a, a Catholic. And as in, in, the, in the Presbyterian church, uh, it was there that I started to learn through discipleship what it means to be Presbyterian. You see, the word Presbyterian means elder. We're, we're run and led by elders. We have a session that is a group of elders that has been elected by the congregation to lead them and to guide them. Matt and myself, we're teaching elders, but we also have ruling elders. And in this devotion, this devotion really serves as an intro of what's to come. We're about to start this new series called Elderly Wisdom, where you're gonna get the opportunity to get to hear from our different elders what it means to be the church. And they're gonna be taking you through something that I think that the EPC, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, which we're a part of, they're gonna take you through something that they developed that is a wonderful resource that we want to introduce to you. It's called the Leadership Training Guide. You can access this at the EPC's website, epc.org. And our elders are going to take you through these different chapters of the book. And they're just gonna skim and kind of hit on a couple points from each chapter. But I hope that you can go to that website and download this, this resource and study on your own. Is this gonna be a lot more meaty? Meaning it's gonna not just be, it's gonna be stuff that you're probably gonna wrestle with and, and, and stuff and more theological issues like anthropology, the study of man, uh, at eschatology, the, the end times. And it's gonna look at, at, at all these other different areas that I hope will help you understand what it means for us to be Presbyterian. It's gonna look at the reformed faith. It's gonna look at our church structure, our church government, our church officers. And I hope that it's a wonderful blessing to you. Again, you can go to the EPC website and download that because we seek here to model what we read about in Acts chapter two, is we wanna be a congregation that's led by the Holy Spirit, that glorifies God, that make disciples and meets human needs. And we get that from scripture. And we hope that you'll see and learn a little bit more what it means to be Presbyterian, what it means to have reformed faith, really what it means to be the church. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your church and we thank you how you have preserved it and how you, Holy Spirit, have given us the ability to, to be led and to know that we're not in the dark when it comes to the church. You have given us structure, you have given us systems in place so that we can flourish, so that your word and your gospel can go forth. So I pray through these upcoming weeks, Lord, as our elders lead in these devotions, that our church would be blessed by that. 
We thank you for this resources, this resource of the leadership training guide. And we pray that all in our church would strive to become leaders, strive to grow in their faith, and strive to better to, to glorify you. We pray all this for your glory and in your name. Amen.